Hello and welcome. This is James at the DSO Imager channel and tonight I'm going to go over my processing workflow for the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. So for this one I used my uh, Stellarview SV70T with the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. Uh, for the mount I used my Celestron AVX. So what you see here is the raw stack uh, no processing done at all. Uh, this is what 10 hours looks like. Now that scope, it's a 70 millimeter refractor. Focal length with the 0.8 reducer is 336 millimeters. So it's a pretty wide field um, uh, optical setup. However, the 533 being a relatively small processor, uh, we don't get quite as wide a field as uh, you may expect uh, for this telescope. But it still frames up really nice, and um, it's actually very easy to work, work with this data. I stacked it using the weighted batch pre-processing script, and now it even auto-crops. So the first step that I usually do, which is crop the stacking artifacts out of the image, uh, I didn't even need to do uh, this time around. So the very first thing I did was dynamic background extraction, and I did a lot of experimentation. Now what I did, uh, you can see them down here. I removed the stars initially, uh, but this wasn't to work on this image. This was to experiment with dynamic background extraction, uh, specifically uh, the placement of the um, reference points. And so it, you can see there's different variations of this uh, with, the, with these darker areas. Right? It can be a little tricky because this whole area, I mean, there's no background per se. There's all this dust around it. So it was kind of tricky to figure out which which way to go. And that's what most of these processes are. These are all saved uh, dynamic background settings with different reference points, just to try to get an idea of what worked best. And what I ended up going with was this. So you can see the stars are here because I ran, I experimented on the starless and then applied it to one that I had not taken the stars out yet. And this is what I ended up with. And I run, ran dynamic background extraction twice. I did it first with division and followed up with subtraction. Now the next step was to do color calibration. And there was also a little bit of experimentation on this. Uh, just real quick, if those that run picks and set are not familiar, uh, there's now uh, this the spectrophotometric color calibration, which works great, but you do have to uh, plate solve your your images first. And if you go to image analysis and then go to image solver, what you want to do is um, put the date rough. It doesn't have to be exact, but the date that you took this image. And uh, you can click a search here and just, I did a search for Alden Attack and uh, that's where it got its coordinates from. And then you just want to make sure that the focal distance and pixel size is correct. So you run that against your image and it'll uh, assign the plate solve coordinates and then you can run uh, color calibration and run this. Now, the thing is, uh, I tried it two different ways. The default is this average spiral galaxy. Uh, but I also was curious to see, uh, I tried this. So this 09 V star, I know that all attack is an 09 type star. And so I also tried using this. Uh, and the results that I got from that are here. So this one is using color calibration using the uh, 09 star and this is the one using the uh, uh, galaxy reference. And so I was kind of drawn to the red in this one but the star colors ironically were were not quite right at least not what I'm used to. Uh, you know who knows is, is this really the more accurate one or is this the more accurate one. I opted to continue with this one uh, because I just I like the blues here it seemed like this one washed out the color too much. Maybe there was too much green in, in this or something, but this is the one that I went with. 
I just want to show that as an example of experimentation with different uh, different steps, right? So a lot of experimentation with dynamic background extraction, and then here's some experimentation with uh, color calibration. All right, so made a clone of that, and a lot of the work was done on this, and so I'll step through this here. All right, so naturally we pull the stars out. Uh, we are still linear at this stage and next should be a stretch and for stretching I just simply did the easy processing soft stretch and then from here on out uh, it's mostly curves work so you can see that I was making uh, I was using a reference to this dark area and trying to just increase the contrast in this dust All right, we got our first mask on there. And this is where I'm wanting to maybe increase contrast in here without letting the areas that are masked off here get too dark. And we'll just step through some of this more. So you can see very subtle changes. All right, we got a uh, mask going and a box. And usually when I do this, it's because I'm trying to incre increase the contrast in this uh, reddish area and I may have a preview box and do some experimentation in here before applying it to the the whole image. Now uh, what was going on here is that this just it felt a little bit too green to me and so I made a mask here to um, increase the blue, the blue a bit, or rather dial back the green. Yeah, so just more color work there. Increase saturation a little bit. Working on those in that background area now, right? So I just inverted the mask using the same mask. And it looks like this is where I ended up. So after this, uh, I did some work on the stars. All right, so here they are unstretched. Uh, I used arc sign stretch to do the initial two stre uh, stretches. This is to kind of keep the cores of the stars from bl blowing out. And then follow up with a regular stretch. And ended up here, it looks like. Okay, so the thing is, I'm not stretching the stars all the way. So even though the stars have been color calibrated prior to this because they're now not being stretched all the way, you still get like some magenta and uh, green left over in there. And so this is just inverting this to remove some of this green here. And what this will end up doing is it'll help these yellow and orange stars look more true to their colors than um, than having this green tint. And it will also help the blues look more blue without kind of a magenta tint to it. So this is what the stars uh, ended up. And this is what we get after putting the stars back together via pixel math. Now from here, I took it into Photoshop and I just uh, did a really mild adjustment with the contrast slider and tweaked saturation a tiny little bit and then I brought it back into uh, Pix and Sight and so this is what we have after I tweaked it a little bit more and one last step was to apply uh, noise reduction using noise exterminator right here and you can see the the settings that I used and there it is so that's our final image. I'll zoom in. You notice I didn't smooth it out too much. Just took most of the grain out. So it had been a while since I've uh, used a one-shot color camera. And it was nice to get this one up and running. Um, very simple processing here on a relatively bright target with... Um, a very good camera, very easy to process this. And um, here's what I ended up with. 
So any thoughts or questions, please put them down in the comment section. This is a popular winter target. If uh, you've shot this target, uh, let's hear about it in the comments. If you've got it posted anywhere, let me uh, know where you've got it posted. And uh, of course, if you liked this video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Uh, also, um, if you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate a subscription. And with that, I'll end it and uh, clear skies. Mm -hmm.